Welcome to today's webinar. The topic today is form finding and calculation of pneumatic membrane structures in RFM6. My name is Andreas Hörold. I'm responsible for marketing and public relations in the Global Software Company. For instance, the website, the German and English webinars, newsletters, and so on. I will be the moderator today and I will answer your questions together with Jürgen Teilmann and Stefan Hoffmann will be the presenter, but my two colleagues can introduce themselves. Thank you, Andreas. So my name is Stefan Hoffmann and I'm working at Global for three years already now. And I'm mainly working in the customer support by answering mails and phone calls. But I'm also involved in the development of our wind simulation and form finding or cutting patterns. And that's the reason why I want to present the webinar today for you. Yes, and my name is Jürgen Teilmann. I also work in the customer support of Global Software. I've been in the company for about one and a half years now, and I also do some online trainings on, for our customers. And this is the reason why I will be answering your questions today. Now back to Andreas. Okay, thank you for your introduction. Then we can switch off our webcams so that the attendees can see the full screen. Uh, some words, how you can ask questions uh, for the attendees who participate the first time. You can show or hide the control panel on the right side of your screen with that arrow here and then enter your question here and we will answer you. If you don't get an answer during the webinar because there are too many, you will get an email afterwards. The other way is to watch the entire webinar and then email your questions to info at global.com. Before I hand over the screen to Stefan, I would like to invite you to our booth on the Bau in Munich. Yeah, just book your live demo and you will get your free ticket with that link here or you can scan the QR code. Okay, that's all from my side. I hand over the screen to Stefan, just a moment. Okay, Stefan, it's your turn. Thank you. So I think I already took over the screen and you should now see the PowerPoint presentation with the first slide I want to present you. So this is the content of today's webinar. So the main effort is of course to present you the form finding add form finding add-on of RFM6. And thus I will introduce you uh, with an overview of some new features we are working about or which are already implemented since the last webinars. We will model two uh, pneumatical systems. We will handed over to our digital wind tunnel, so our wind simulation. And we will later on uh, do a design of the supporting structure. And last but not least, I will show you some prospect, uh, what are upcoming features, what is planned for development, and later on Andreas will conclude. So let's start with the first slide. So this is the overview of the new features which were implemented. Of course, not a full list, but some parts which I want to present you. The first two are still not uh, released, so you cannot test it currently, but uh, I can already show you what is planned, what is implemented, and what is the topic about. So first of all, it is a surface load uh, of the load type Z. So you can define some movement of a cushion or of a membrane into a certain direction in order to find the shape. The next one is the ponding load. So this means it's some rain falling on your membrane. And if it's already bent in some direction, it is an iterative calculation where the load will increase until some equilibrium is found. You can imagine that by having a tent which is not fully stressed and it will rain on it and then the membrane which is quite weak will bend a lot. The next feature which is already implemented is uh, the difference results. So whenever you use uh, your form finding shape which is a bit different to RFM5 since it's not a complete initial state. In RFM6 you are now able to define multiple initial states. So it's like you create one form finding shape, you can put the snow on it, you can create a second form finding shape where you put some other load combination on it. And if you do that by using an initial state, you can check for the difference results. 
uh, to see what is the additional load bringing to you. And then you can, of course, also check the final results as a summary of the initial state and the um, loading. And last but not least, um, due to the fact that we are now using forces as definition of form finding forces, it's not an uh, additional option of a member now anymore or of a surface. I will later on show it to you. Uh, you are now also able to use set of member loads, which is quite useful if you have to split your cables to single members. Uh, you can define as you are used to a set of members and also load them with a form finding load. So let me shortly close the presentation and I will show you an eye catcher model at start. You can as well find the model usually at the webinar page in order to check it. So this is a simple overview. I want to show you about some different cushion shapes uh, I have found in a manual. So you can see that there are some rectangular, some multi-corner shapes, or also some circle shapes or some elliptical shapes. And you are of course able to define cushions in RFM6 maybe not as you are used to with a so-called beige plane surface type, uh, but all you need to do is to create a solid. And I will quickly de delay the mesh in order to show you how you can in RFM6 create a cushion. Uh, I'd like to show it at the rectangular example. So all I did is I have um, created two times four surfaces and I have moved a middle node at a certain distance in our example. I moved it uh, roughly 250 millimeters into one direction. So it, for your understanding, does not matter how far you move the node. It's just a modeling issue because you set the boundary conditions for the form finding process in order to find the shape of the cushion. So it just has to be at least one millimeter but in order to be able to model it a bit better from uh, viewing the model, you can also increase it. And later on, with regards to the boundary conditions, like the inner pressure of the solid, in our case, 300 Pascal, and the isotropic form finding pre-stress of our surfaces, it will find a shape. So as told, if you want to use the form finding add-on, uh, you will have to activate it in the add-ons. And then it is not an option, as already explained, that you have to have some edit button of the surface now in order to define a form finding load. Uh, now you can find the form finding load as a usually surface load. So this is now uh, your task. Usually if you do a normal static analysis, you use the force load type. But now you can see that there's also a category of type form finding. And then you will, of course, be offered as used in RFM5 uh, for different calculation methods, also different form finding definitions. And then you can enter your uh, form finding load. I did uh, one kilonewton per meter as our isotropic form finding pre-stress for the surfaces. The same uh, goes for the uh, solid loads. So now it's not a, a setting of a solid, but it's a load type. Uh, so the load type is not form finding for a solid load. It's a normal load type of gas. And then you can define a certain gaze behavior. So like resulting overpressure uh, or some other type, you can see in the small picture some explanation of it. Or if you hit uh, F1 and go to the form finding manual, you can also see some explanation in there. So you can find, for example, a chapter with the form finding loads. And if you're curious what the solid loads are about, you can just quickly check it also in the manual. Okay, so uh, last but not least, there would be of course some member loads. I do not have any member currently defined, but I can show it then later on in the member set loads, what the form finding loads can be or how they can be defined. So if you introduced uh, all the, let's call them boundary conditions, uh, you can apply them in a separate load case. Uh, so since I will not load these cushions in our quick example model with some other loads, I have only defined one load case of the action category pre-stress. And since we are using the form finding, we have of course to do a large deformation analysis. And if you want to adjust some settings of the form finding, like the number of iterations or the speed of convergence, this can be done in the static analysis settings. Uh, 
but uh, we do not want to do it at the moment. So uh, if you did so, just uh, once again to re uh, recap the eye catcher, we run the iteration. It will do then a third order calculation. It will move according to my set forces, all the nodes to the correct position uh, or to the expected position. And then you will receive a result. As you're used to, you can, of course, uh, display the contour lines. This means this is the distance from the uh, global z-axis with the zero point into the global z-axis direction because it's the easiest way to evaluate the deformation. And you can see that our cushions are loaded equally with uh, isotropic pre-stress. They have different dimensions. This means that, of course, due to the um, equilibrium, they will have a certain different distance. If you reject for the displacement, take care that you always use a display vector of one, because otherwise the results might be a bit misleading, and that the shown deformation of one meter approximately uh, is the deformation with regards to the standard um, model mesh. So you have to add 250 millimeters, for example, at the middle node in order to achieve the deformation which is shown in here. Okay, so this is uh, most likely, or this was most likely the eye catcher and there's some recap of how the form finding add-on can be used. And now I will switch into the pre-release version. So this model is not introduced on the website. Um, but uh, it is available for us. And I will show you the first model, uh, what I already created. And this is the one which is about the sec definition. So mainly this is a six uh, or a shape with eight corners. And uh, it is meant to be loaded by inner pressure. And usually in order to determine the sec or the deformation of the cushion, you will have to enter a pre-stress uh, with the current options you have. So usually if you uh, expect a certain deformation of two meter and five centimeters in our example for the shape, it was calculated that you need to pre-stress it isotropic uh, with 2.75 kilonewton per meter if you have an inner pressure of 300 pascal. Uh, this is sometimes quite hard to evaluate uh, how high the stress will be. You can, of course, test it, iterate it, and try to find the shape you want to achieve. Uh, but now we uh, introduced or are going to introduce uh, in an upcoming version. I cannot fully determine uh, when it will be there, but it should be there soon. Uh, that you can define a form finding definition now, not only both, uh, based on force or stresses, but also based on the Z definition. You can see a bit in the preview how this will then be meant. Uh, you enter a ratio. So this is now not a, a value of pre-stress, but a ratio. So if you want to have an isotropic pre-stress, you enter just a one and one into the norm, normal x and y axis of the surface. And then you can define a sec, which is then, of course, the highest deflection um, of a surface. Uh, what I entered now as two meter and five. And this is then related to three points what you can enter. The base is, of course, the base of the surface. So if I quickly show it in the snipping tool, the base is, of course, if you have a, a base uh, and then you will have uh, some bent membrane. Uh, this will then, of course, be the base uh, value from there going to top. And the next one would be to you are able to define a coordinate system. So this means uh, currently the coordinate system, if you do not define something, is the base. But you can also move uh, the coordinate system top or bottom. And then the deformation would be, of course, uh, measured from this point or to this point. So you're also able to set a certain coordinate system in order to have a certain sect defined to that coordinate system. It's also possible for an angled cushion or also for angled cushions. So I will just quickly run the form finding calculation. And then you can see that uh, we will get, of course, the results we are expecting if we enter the ZEC or the isotropic pre-stress. So we can always uh, check the convergence diagram. It's not linear because it's, of course, a nonlinear calculation, road order. And then we will get the results. I will just quickly uh, 
only display those both because this one has a certain different ZEC. So if you can see that uh, you can achieve both the same uh, deformations of two approximately, approximately <laughs> two meters and five, uh, if you enter isotropic pre-stress of 2.75 kilonewton per meter, or if you define it by the base of a ZEC of two meter and five. So we can compare now also the internal forces, which should be in a similar region. Of course, uh, this looks quite smoothed. Uh, I have now displayed the results moving as constant on mesh elements because I prefer it to be displayed like this. But you can see that our surface sec definition will also achieve a result which is approximately 2.72. And here we define 2.75 uh, and also into the y direction. It is uh, also in the region of this uh, definition. So we match the form by just entering the ZEC uh, in this example. It also works for this angled cushion if you define a coordinate system. So you can also define, of course, coordinate systems in the program by edit them or entering them in here. And you can also um, activate them if you go into the navigator and set it active. And then you can see that for the angled cushion, I have defined also an angled coordinate system. You can, of course, also use the base in order to have uh, the cushion being bent um, and to achieve the two meter and five, uh, 90 degrees uh, or into the normal axis of the surface. What I did in my last example is <clears throat> that I adjusted the coordinate system and let me quickly display the shape. And now we have a one meter higher shape of the cushion. <clears throat> and what I now did is uh, the thing that I defined the coordinate system uh, for the top one, which is moved one meter bottom, uh, one meter higher, sorry. So uh, you will have as shown a one meter higher um, line. Thus, uh, the two meter five will be meant from the line and the base of the cushion is on the bottom. So the total value will be two meter and five plus one meter, which is the distance and over here. So we will achieve then three meter and five. And since it can bend a bit higher, the inner pre-stress will of course be as expected lower than the 2.75. So this is a tool you can hopefully use in an upcoming version. Let me close this and let's go to the next example, the ponding load, which is also yet only available in the pre-release mode. So I will open my created file. It's a simple four <coughs> node supported membrane uh, where I have cables at the edge and I have defined a isotropic pre-stress with the dead load in order to bend the membrane a bit. Uh, what we will need for this ponding load is uh, our two points. So you can have uh, most likely some something like a, a shape what is having a, uh, what is having rectangular walls, uh, where you will receive most likely also a volume which can be filled, or you will have a, a pre-stressed uh, mesh according to a theory third order. Uh, as you can see, we have now a bit of bending downwards to the Z direction. And then you can apply a ponding load. If I double click on it, uh, it is from load type ponding. Once again, to remind you, it's not yet available in the normal customer version, so you will not find it currently. Uh, but it will allow you to define some rain or ponding load. So you can either use that uh, you will fill your full shape until an equilibrium is found, or you can define the amount of uh, precipitation. So meaning that it will rain 10 millimeter per square meter in order to have some static standard requirements being fulfilled, or in order to decide if it will be available, that it will stand uh, if it's raining that high, or if you have to have some, um, improvements being done. So in our first example, we define for this 10 square meters a precipitation of 10 millimeter. Uh, we will let the iterative um, calculation run and it will give us some certain deformation and it will give us also roughly 10 kilonewton what we would expect since it is raining, uh, you will have some band shape and then you could calculate uh, the volume according <clears throat> to the amount of precipitation. You can of course also increase it. So if we five times have it, uh, we can also let it run. And uh, it should also be later on 
possible to use it with a, a snow, but this is all a part of a later development. So this is meant uh, in order to fulfill some design checks uh, you may need uh, because some structures that already collapse due to high rain amount uh, onto band membranes. So we will now close the pre-release mode and I will step back into the normal mode. Let me quickly close this and I will go to the next part of the presentation. So the difference results. So this is already in the main program. Uh, I have created a structure of two membranes. So quite an easy four point supported structure with cables at the edges, a normal isotropic pre-stress what I will give on it and I will quickly run the initial state. So this is as you're most likely used to the normal form finding calculation also done in RFM5. Uh, but this is then uh, being done in the main program of course uh, and I will receive a shape uh, I will use an isotropic one kilonewton per meter in this shape and 10 in this shape. So you can see that of course the inner forces, let me quickly go to the inner forces of the surface, um, they will differ. So you will reach one in here and 10 in here, but the shape should be the same since the ratio and the external loads is the same. So the deformation of the membrane due to the same ratio of the forces is equal. We will now apply a snow load into the projected direction of all surfaces and we will combine them in a load combination. And keep in mind that due to the fact that our initial condition is always to be needed as our form finding condition, of course, now in RFM6, you will have to consider the initial state from it uh, where we take over the final state. So, um, everything most likely deformation and um, strains are taken over. We can hit calculate. It should usually run the initial state, but we already have these results. So it's now only calculating the combination. And we can see that of course, we will receive some results and uh, a new tab will open and the result navigator where you can now differ between the final results and the differences to the initial state. For this, I have already created three windows and I will tile them uh, vertically, <laughs> uh, horizontally. Uh, let me quickly reopen them. Um, and on the top one, I will present the initial state I have chosen. So let me quickly display the uh, inner forces of the surfaces and also the internal forces of the cables around it. And then you can compare the results with the differences to the initial state uh, if you want to compare them. So don't be afraid that now a membrane can show a um, positive or let's let's say um, compressive strength forces um, to you. Well, it's, it's over, it's not shown. Um, now you can see in here. So we would uh, receive some uh, minus values but we will never expect for membranes, but it's of course, uh, difference uh, of the result. So uh, it will then has to be sum up and you can as well of course also display then the final results uh, which is then a summary of course of the difference and the initial state. Uh, so if we would display in here also the inner force as a quick example 47, 46 will sum up to 93 of course. So this is a tool that you will not have to do some hand calculation in order to differ what uh, the external loading may do to your membrane. You can quickly evaluate it already in a combination. So let's uh, close this example and I will open the last example for the first part. So this is now the set of member loads. I have opened this. So it may be due to the type of uh, structure you need to model that you will have to split your cables. So this is a 10 meter cable uh, into different um, parts depending maybe you do have a cable net or something like this. And if you would do so, and you would define a normal geometrical load. So we will recap as told, we can edit member loads as a load type of form finding. And if we choose now the definition type of geometric with a normal member sec of half a meter in the middle of the member, 
uh, we will never get a shape uh, what we will get if we will have a, a full cable since it is then always based on the local deformation of the members so the results will do or will not make any sense at all uh, for our normal cable we will have uh, our half a meter and also if we define a member set and a member set load which can be defined uh, on over here so uh, you will have to ignore the first buttons if you use the member set loads uh, you can see that uh, there are various options also for surface sets and also for solid sets that you can set some set loads so this will be of course then the expected deformation uh, and the same goes if you would not uh, define a half a meter but five percent which is then of course also half a meter uh, you can now do it if you have a split cable chain to create a surface set by just marking all members of course and uh, create a member set and then you can also apply member set loads in the form finding process which was not able in rfm5 because it was a, a setting for a member and it was not possible to set it for a member set Okay, so let's close it. And uh, then we already managed to, uh, to finalize the first part of the presentation. And I will now switch to the reference example. Uh, it is a screenshot out of the book of uh, construction with cables and membranes from Mr. Wagner. So it's of course German and not translated, but uh, I will translate the main uh, facts for you. So we will now model as maybe four or five years ago, I think, we did show it uh, for Arthur discussion, uh, four times 12 meters cushion. And it is loaded by three pas 300, 300 Pascal in the middle and also with a snow load and a wind suction. <clears throat> and we apply enough forces in the way that we will reach a sag of uh, 0.4 meters. And then we will apply some loads in order to verificated uh, also with the results they achieved in the program. So we will start by modeling this now. So you of course first have to choose for a name. I always tend to write the, day, uh, the date at first and I will give it a name. You can of course also adjust some project folder. We need of course 3D and we will need of course solids because it's a 3D, 3D structure. And then we will of course need our form finding add-on so we will activate it and all the other stuff is not yet necessary or needed for our definition of the model so we would just skip it and uh, hit ok you can also load the template if you want to uh, but now we have our blank file so now it depends of course on how you would like to model a model you can start by defining all the properties you need or you will start by the geometry and define everything you need later on uh, it's up to you so i will start with a new line and as told it is four times 12 meters so i just will use the normal grid which is in the background and uh, draw my rectangle for the cushion so this is at the plane of uh, global z axis uh, is zero uh, and then uh, we will have somehow to create a solid out of it so we can now not define a base plane surface maybe as you are used in a geometry type of a surface we can use now uh, NURB surfaces or quadrangle this is up to you if you want to use the NURBS surface you will also have to use NURBS lines in order to determine your shape but from my point of view a quite quick way is uh, that you just think about uh, where is the middle of your cushion um, in order to check for some pre-bent uh, solid or pre-constructed uh, solid in order to give it a pressure and also a pre-stress. So what I would now do is uh, I would uh, simply split the cushion into a half by introducing a line. Uh, I'm always used uh, currently to just uh, cut it and then I will have my lines also being cut in over here. And then I will define a new quadrangle surface. Take care that the preset is NURBS, so you have to click the small arrow in order to be able to define a quadrangle surface. As you can see, uh, it will start with the materials of my last file. So I already have a thickness type defined and a material defined. But let's quickly recap uh, on how you could define a material for your membrane. In RFM5, or we do, did not offer any materials because membranes are most likely up to uh, their 
producers, producers, and you will have a certain data sheet of their settings. So we will now we have now introduced two types of membranes. Uh, you can use them uh, if you go to the material type of fabric, and then there are some materials to select. Uh, so it's up to you if they match uh, with the materials you need to use. Uh, once you define it. You can, of course, uh, double check for the material values which are introduced. So if I don't use user-defined, you can see that uh, this type of fabric membrane has a certain different uh, emodulus uh, into x and y direction. This is the local direction of the surface. Um, and uh, thus, uh, it is, of course, representing the strength of a normal membrane. You can also hit the material, material values tab in order to check for the tensile strength into the warp and the ref direction. So in our case, it's similar. Uh, usually, um, we would now, most likely for this example, have to adjust it. So I have already defined it will be a user-defined material for autotropic direction, linear elastic surfaces. Um, and I have defined an isotropic behavior. So you could have, of course, also chosen isotropic. These values are up to the reference example out of the book I showed you. You can also check for the stiffness matrices, which are then converted in Newton per square millimeter in our example. And if you would like to do, you could, of course, also apply a stiffness modification. Uh, so this is everything we need uh, and then we usually need a thickness type and if you define a fabric material the thickness type will automatically be used for it with a thickness of one millimeter uh, maybe you remember if you already used fm5 we always tend to have the material proper's properties uh, being scaled by one meter now we decided uh, depending on the setting for the unit you have done in the program uh, to use now one millimeter and this will then leave you with a quite quick comparison of your material properties to the given warp and weft strength uh, because it's quite simply then converted um, but if you do not want to have to be or to enter a one millimeter thickness you may not use a fabric material type you can then define your own material if you really want to and give it the correct thickness but as told in our example we will use a fabric material so it's then uh, being used by one millimeter. Uh, so we did it. The last thing is, if you <laughs> would now hit OK, it will claim that the material is not supported for this uh, surface because this is uh, an autotropic material and we have the stiffness type as being standard. We will now, of course, need to use a membrane, which can only carry um, tension forces, of course. And then the warning will not appear again. You can then define your quadrangle if you want to, but as I can see, I have forgotten to do one thing. Uh, now we could, of course, define a planar quadrangle, which is not su sufficient for our solid. So what I would now do is that I divide this line in one node, and then I will just quickly copy paste this uh, or move this node uh, with our tools we have. In our example, I will move it 250 millimeter I always fail, <laughs> it's meter, uh, so minus 250 millimeter. So you can also enter a unit and then you do not have to think about the conversion in here. So we will, we have now put it to have a small uh, movement into the global Z direction. And now we can define our top shape for the cushion. So once we use the thickness already defined and we just hit our planes. So you can see the shape is not really looking smart. So you can double click on the quadrangle if it is defined in a weird way. You can hit the graphical display and we can now see that the corner nodes are automatically taken as 1576. For our shape, it does not make a lot of sense. So we would like 1, 5, 6 and 2. So we can quickly just uh, choose a node in here, hit apply and redefine our shape. Uh, if you want to see it a bit better, you can also uh, have it filled and you can see that the shape of the quadrangle is not really looking smart, uh, but you can already see it if you have the dotted line. So in our case, we will just quickly rearrange it. You can also choose this button in order to choose for four nodes. It's similar to RFM5. If you have a more than four corner nodes, uh, you will sometimes have to adjust the shape of the quadrangle because this then also defines the FE mesh. And if it's too 
crappy, then it might uh, be not a smart calculation for you. Uh, what I would now display is also the local access system. So you can see it's a bit angled. So you can mark both surfaces and specify the axis. This is usually or was usually necessary in the past by defining it uh, for autotropic uh, pre-stress, what we will also apply. So I just choose this line in order to have my X direction of the surfaces being uh, parallel to this line. And then my Y surface uh, local axis will of course be 90 degrees. So I will now mark both and reverse the local system because I will have to have the Z value being to top. All right, if we do so, uh, we can mark our boundary lines or you can mark everything and hit shift and deselect uh, these ones. And we will just simply apply a normal uh, line support, which we will directly hide because I think it's a bit too high. You can also, uh, too wide, you can also hit the right click and uh, smaller uh, the line support, but uh, since it's not mainly necessary for us, we can also hide it. What we can now do is we will just mark everything and then we will mirror it uh, just with the normal definition and we will use the XY plane in order to mirror it. Uh, I always forget to hit the copy button. <laughs> As you can see, it's always happening to me uh, because we want, of course, to create a copy. And then we can double check once again, of course, on what. Uh, the shape of our membranes will be on the top one and uh, double check the corner node definition if we want to 1526 sounds quite good 1526 okay and then we might double check of course the access system if it is also to line number two it is so i'm just a bit weird so but the coordinate system should match you can also uh, as well um reverse it if you want to of both surfaces and then we will have most likely our two shapes uh, we need for our cushion and the last thing is that we need to create a new solid of course it has to be a solid uh, gas type of uh, solid type of gas the material has to be a gas material so we will define a new material where we will go into the material type of gas and we will just use dry air say okay and then you will have to define a gas solid, which is the initial state for the gas. So we will use in our example, just a normal definition of a one bar and 23, uh, 23 degrees of Celsius. And then you will have last but not least to assign the boundary conditions, say okay. And then our gas solid is defined. I will now switch off the local axis. And then we have, of course, our cushion being defined. We will then have to create the first load case. It does not have to be the initial state, but I call it initial state uh, where I will define my loads for the pre-stress. So let me quickly have a look how they did it. So they defined a surface load. You can also now define surface sets if you want to, but they have a form finding surface load defined that it is, uh, I think 0 0.5 into one direction and 1.56 into the small direction. So 0 0.5, 1.56. And they also defined a gas load of 300 Pascal resulting over pressure. So we will do it. It's already assigned to service solid number one because there's only so one solid. And this would be everything for our initial state. Let's check if our model is working. It's always one thing I would uh, propose to you before starting entering some other data. And we would expect something about 400 millimeter of deflection. Uh, this depends, of course, on the uh, FE mesh. The finer the FE mesh, uh, the better, of course, the cushion will go to the expected deformation. But it's also some choose of calculation time. So we will leave it with the normal FE mesh settings we do have with the three angles for the quadrangle surfaces. And this is the shape you would expect according to the, uh, to the book. Um, so it's about 0 0.4 meters or uh, 387 millimeters. So now it is uh, mentioned that they apply a snow load on it. So we will use a snow load for a normal system. You can also, of course, enter some definition in here. It's a wind suction, which is then defined. And uh, 
Then you could, of course, uh, think about entering the form finding data or the loads you want to have for snow and wind, because for the snow, uh, we will have some open system where we will increase the pressure even more from 300 Pascal to 600 Pascal. Or you can also have a closed system where the pressure will not be increased, but it is uh, thought that the cushion is closed. So it will stay at 300 Pascal. And we will also do it for the wind suction where it will mainly stay at 300 Pascal or it will be held by 300 Pascal. So this is most likely the difference between open and closed. So I will once as well create a, a new um, pre-stress load case where I uh, name it 600 Pascal and one where I name it 300 Pascal in order to define my loads. So if you did so, you can uh, also switch between the load cases and their definition. So for our 300 Pascal, we define now a resulting overpressure of 299.9 because we cannot enter the same amount uh, because it's a resulting overpressure. Uh, we always need a small overpressure increment. So in our case, we define 299.9. Uh, we have a resulting overpressure now we want to achieve. Uh, so it already has 300. And if we define it by a resulting overpressure, um, we will now add 600 in here, uh, of course, and define it to the solid. And the next one is snow and wind. So for the snow, you will have to pick your top surfaces and add a surface load there. Uh, it is mentioned as a normal force of 0.5 kilonewton per square meter into the projected area. So you can use the global Z system, of course. Um, and then we will, of course, define the wind suction, which is also on the top surface. Uh, this is the reason why I reverted the coordinate system, so you can apply it locally as a force. And this was, let me quickly have a look, 0 0.78 kilonewton per square meter. So if we enter so, uh, we have our forces. And the next thing is that we will have to define our load combinations. Currently, uh, we have our design situations being done by the combination wizard. Uh, we will not use it for our example. Uh, so we will uh, switch it off the combination wizard and we will define our own load cases. So this one would be the first load case, which is a comparison of snow uh, open. So you would always have to consider, of course, your initial state if you want to choose it and then assign, for example, if we want to have a resulting overpressure of 600 LC4, uh, including snow. Um, the next one is the closed one. So we will not increase, increase the amount of uh, pressure. The next one would be wind suction with uh, the fixed uh, inner pressure. And last but not least, it will be the wind suction without any increase. Okay, so I did quickly uh, Define them, we can now run our normal uh, ULS, which is then the envelope, of course, and starting all the corresponding uh, combinations. And uh, let's only check for the snow load. So you can, of course, see once again the final results and the difference. And the thing is now that uh, due to the fact that solids is displayed, uh, you cannot really see the contour, but the top uh, surface is bending a bit downwards. Let's check for the deformed shape uh, and the bottom surface is a bit higher. So this model is of course also available. So you can double check for the verification examples if we reach what we want to reach. You can also display the solid uh, loads, for example, the volume of the cushion and also the resulting overpressure, what we defined with 600 Pascal in our case. Okay, so this uh, will conclude uh, the first uh, reference example uh, we will also provide for you. And uh, then it is up to the next part. So the modeling of our pneumatical example. Oops, sorry, Andreas. And I will go on. I will define a new model, but this time I will just open my model and already use the definitions of the materials and so on, because this is a uh, basic stuff you can do in, in RFM. Uh, so I just delayed my model and then I have already my load cases and so on defined. Okay, so we will not start with a blank file. What I would now like to model is, uh, did I close it already? Let me quickly go to it. Uh, it is some um, uh, roof standing in Germany. So it's a, a four column roof. Uh, 
I always tend to say it looks like it looks like a mushroom <laughs> a bit. Uh, so it's a quite symmetric system with cushion in its place. And we will start by just drawing a first member. Um, it's a normal section. So it's a normal uh, SHS section. Uh, it is uh, four meters high. And it is uh, having a cantilever or it's having a, a fixed support at the bottom. And uh, this is all we need at the bottom. Then we will switch our plane at the top of the of the member, and then we can continue by drawing our members. Uh, you can also pick over the definitions if you want to from the current existing member. And we will have uh, now a rectangle. So we would just use the normal grid in order to define it. And we will have one member uh, in the middle. Pretty close to definition. Okay, so if it, you can also drag and drop the node onto there if you did not uh, hit it correctly. And now we will only move those corner nodes two meters higher. And this is most likely one third, uh, one fourth of the shape of one mushroom. Uh, so the next thing is that we of course need to create once again a solid. So for this, I will once again draw a line into the middle uh, of my elements. I will mark it and divide it into two lines. Then I will just simply mark my nodes, copy them with Control Z, Control V on the keyboard, uh, 50 millimeters higher. You can see, uh, depending on how high you move them, the easier it is to snap it. So I will now define a second line on the top. And this will leave you to be able now to define a quadrangle surface of the same thickness we used in over before with the same material. Uh, so we can now choose to pick uh, the lines we need. Of course, I will now have once to split this member because I want to have uh, four separate membranes being defined. So now it's only picking uh, some members. Could already think about uh, what is the best uh, sorting. So if you pick first the top uh, and then the bottom, or pick first the bottom and then the top. But this is then up to you, of course. So all we need, of course, is to create uh, the boundary shapes for our solid. So I think I have done all four. You can also display it uh, if you want to be filled. So the next thing is I mark every surface, I double click on them and I specify my input X because I always like, I always like to have my axes being uh, localized to uh, some certain line, what I know. So you can quickly then of course check for the local axis system always. Um, if you rearrange them, maybe I did not hit uh, these sur surfaces in here. 15, that does not like me today. Although it's, it's okay, it just looked weird, but the x-axis is going into the line direction. Okay, I uh, do not display them. And uh, now I would go to the way that I mark my both top surfaces. Uh, you can see that it's quite hard if you only move the node a bit, uh, but you can mark them, right click on them and create a new surface set. Uh, so you can even give them a comment like being the top surfaces and you can hit apply and create a new one and choose for the bottom ones and sell uh, bottom for example. So this is the way you could choose for surface sets and then you can already define the solids. So I will define a new gas solid as gas, dry air and uh, the gas solid and I will choose for my four boundary surfaces. I will do it again. Let's clear it because I already marked some surfaces before and hit it okay. Uh, so what I skipped by opening the model is of course that we will use a 3D model type and use now form finding wind simulation add-on in order to create the wind loads on a not common shape. And we will also use the stress drain analysis, which is offering us a cross section analysis. Uh, so we will not take care about stability problems of the steel members. We will only do a cross section analysis of the steel members later on, as well as for our membranes. And we will use it for the German uh, annex. 
You can see that in the initial file, I already defined some load cases. So I will have now some initial state. Uh, I will define a gas load. Once again, uh, you can of course think about your own gas loads. Uh, we will quickly just uh, choose 300 Pascal. You do not necessarily have to pick the solids. You can also define it by entering their number, which is a bit easier sometimes. Sometimes it's not easier, depends on what you want to do. Uh, we will quickly create a member set as well for uh, these surfaces, so the top surfaces again. Give them the comment um, and one more for the bottom ones uh, because I want to define then surface set loads. Okay, and then I will define my surface set loads where I can see, of course, my surface sets. Let's also give it a bottom uh, comment. Uh, what will make it a bit easier for me because I want to have a normal form finding load of a uh, four kilonewton per meter for the top surface sets. So I could now choose in the graphics or I could just simply check uh, my comment, what I did. Um, so I define it uh, for them as being four and I will define two for my other two. And then I'm most likely done with the form finding definitions. Uh, you could then quickly already enter the snow load, uh, which is now example 0.5. Uh, which is then of course also used to be a surface set load 0.5 into the projection area. Uh, this will be assigned also only at the top one and three. And the wind loads will be later on of course being uh, defined in the wind simulation or calculated. We will increase or define an overpressure for both gas solids. So you can mark them, new solid load, gas, 300 plus, uh, 600 Pascal. Okay. So by doing this uh, definition already for one fourth of my structure, I can just simply mark it now and rotate it, create a copy of three steps, 90 degrees. Uh, our Z point is zero, zero, zero. And I will of course use that it should be copied including loading, say okay. And then it should be uh, like it is defined in over here uh, that it has taken over all load case definitions, of course, uh, and it will create a shape expecting uh, to what I want to have. And we now simply go once into oops, the zero point uh, because it's uh, easier to check and we will move copy it uh, 10 meters into one X direction, copy it, including loading. And just mark it once again, because uh, we have four of these mushrooms into 10 meters, copy it, including loading. Okay, so if everything went well, what is usually not the case in a webinar, you can now hit F5 and start the calculation. So let's see if I did uh, do something wrong or not. I will see some warnings. Uh, if we see, will see some warnings, we will just uh, load my created file, which is having the same inputs. But it is starting into the calculation. So I will press my thumbs and check if it will run into a equilibrium. So now this is the main form finding calculation without any external loading. You can of course also define for the initial state that you will have some loading. You can also have a form found shape and apply a dead load and use this combination as a initial state. So you're most likely it now in RFM6 fully free or more free than it was in RFM5 to use different shapes as a starting point or as a comparison point. And uh, at least it did calculate. So I'm displaying currently the internal forces should be four at the top and two at the bottom, looking good. And then it should uh, have a solid gas uh, pressure of 209 or 300 approximately, which is now 299. So everything looks good. So the next thing is uh, you could now go and define your load combination. So in our case, uh, I did just uh, define some. So the one time snow load, uh, an overpressure of 600 Pascal and a, the normal dead load, material dead load with the initial state from the form finding process. Uh, I have also the snow closed where we do not increase the inner pressure 
and I have a wind load case where I will only apply the wind load onto the initial state. So this can be done by creating a load case of the analysis type wind simulation and take care that you also consider the initial state from uh, LC1 because this is then the shape which will be put into our digital wind tunnel. Uh, you can adjust also the wind profile and the analysis settings if you need so, do so. I just uh, kept the original ones and I will not start the calculation of our wind because it will take approximately seven minutes for this size of the file, even with the coarse mesh. Uh, I just opened uh, wind by this button in order to display you uh, that is, will of course be given to our wind simulation tunnel uh, and it will for you, oh it's now in German, sorry, <laughs> well, but I will not show a lot of, but it will do of course the shrink mesh for you and then it will do the wind load calculation depending on the inputs you do and it will then retransfer the loads uh, into our model and then you can use the loads for this wind load case. Due to the fact that this will take some time, uh, I did already calculate uh, the model. So I will just open it with the final results. And then I can show you uh, how the loads will then be shown. So all I did is I was just starting the wind calculation for this file already. And then you will get some loads. And for the wind load into X only, okay, so it did not uh, take a while. Well, we should have uh, to have results. Uh, I think we do have, yeah, we do have, but not in the load case. But well, okay, so you can then of course also check for the results in the combination where we have then our wind loads being put on and uh, check also for the contour if you want to, which is not looking that. Uh, easy uh, since it's based to the local z-axis. That's why for this case I would propose that you check the normal global definition with a normal deflection of one. So once you have the results from the wind simulation you would go into the design process. So uh, this is then the stress strain analysis tool we offer. Uh, we will only do it for the stress analysis in our case and for the times of uh, or for the factor of time I will only use the CU1 to be uh, designed in our case. I will not all use every uh, combination and then you only have to click from left to right as you are most likely may be used to it. Uh, we will only uh, determine the surface set one because otherwise it will take uh, half a minute longer. Uh, you can of course analyze every member and surface sets in order to get some results. Um, the next thing is that for our surfaces you will have to think about the surface configuration which is of course being shown in the webinar if you have a look on the stress strain analysis uh, that you can analyze stresses and strains. We want to do only stresses in our example and now uh, it is usually based that you have a limit stress which is giving from the material but as you maybe remember for our material uh, we do not have a limit stress as uh, it is uh, for a normal steel. So a normal steel will of course have a yield strength as a stress based but our material values are per meter. So currently it's necessary to define your surface configuration, most likely similar to often five, that you define the user defined limit stress. And uh, this is in our case, uh, 60 Newton per square millimeter without any reduction factor in our example. And then you can hit okay to calculate the design drill front row and since I've only designed uh, one surface set you can see that it's the only one uh, being shown and then you can of course evaluate your results in one full model in order to uh, make the design process of course and uh, have a full statical documentation so we will now display the stress ratios on members it's of course not economical what uh, we entered in here, but it is only meant to show you what can be done as a cross-section classification. And you can also display the stress ratios then uh, for your surfaces, and you can also check them as well in the add-on if you want to do so. Okay, so this should conclude this part of this model, and I would just uh, step back once into the PowerPoint presentation and it of course the prospect in a full view mode, sorry. So 
to sum up my webinar for today, before I hand over, this is the prospect. Of course, we are working on releasing the two new features I showed to you, so the surface load of SEC and ponding load, as fast as we can. Uh, the surface load may be available quite soon. Ponding load is uh, still a bit in development, but we are working on it. And I think most of you are already rating, of course, also on cutting patterns. Uh, so we are, of course, focusing on developing the add-on also for FM6, that you are then as well able to uh, determine the cutting patterns for your structures. Okay, so I will now hand over back to Andreas. Thanks for listening. Okay, thank you, Stefan, for this nice presentation. Um, I hand over or take over the screen now before I show you the website where you can find the recording and so on. I would like you uh, would like to in, um, invite you again for our booth visit visit on our booth on the Bau in Munich for all attendees who came later. You can get your free ticket if you book your live demo with that link or with the scanning of the QR code. If you don't have time to come to the Bau, you can book your free online appointment. You can book your free product presentation if you have questions to uh, different add-ons or to the programs of M6 and RStart 9. You can get yeah, an, an offer from our sales team. Just scan the QR code or click that link here. You can find all on our website, the PowerPoint slide and the recording here, global.com and under news and events, you can find the webinars. That's the webinar of the next week, construction stages, if you are interested in then the week after next week, uh, code formed steel sections, our FAQ webinar, uh, and that's today's webinar. I click on it. In the next days, you will get an email with a link to that page here. Then you will find the recording here. The PowerPoint slides are already here. And also the models. Okay, that should be also all from my side. I thank you for your attention. Thanks again to Stefan for the nice presentation. Thanks to Jürgen for answering the questions. Maybe a last hint, when you leave the webinar, there is a small survey. It takes you only one minute, I think. You can score the webinar. Just note that the worst score is one and the best score is five. You can leave wishes uh, for future webinars, for example. Yeah, But you can leave that empty or enter a sign such as minus or so on. Okay, I wish all a happy Easter. Uh, I hope we meet each other in a future webinar. Bye-bye.